Hey, Marcus Conti reporting. Good morning. Today is February 27, 2019. We're still here. Wow, imagine that. Feeling very philosophical today. I'm going to take a deep dive. Do some use today. Start off with a reading. November came with raging southwest winds. Building had to stop because it was now too wet to mix the cement. Finally, there came a night when the gale was so violent that the farm buildings rocked on their foundations and several tiles were blown off the roof of the barn. The hens woke up squawking with terror because they had all dreamed simultaneously of hearing a gun go off in the distance. In the morning, the animals came out of their stalls to find that the flagstaff had been blown down and an elm tree at the foot of the orchard had been plucked up like a radish. They had just noticed this when a cry of despair broke out from every animal's throat. A terrible sight met their eyes. The windmill was ruined. With one accord, they dashed down down to the spot. Napoleon, who seldom moved out of a walk, raced ahead of them all. Yes, there it lay, the fruit of their struggles, leveled to its foundations. The stones that they had broken carried so laboriously, scattered all around. Unbearable first to speak, they stood gazing mournfully at the litter of falling falling stone. Napoleon placed to and fro in silence, occasionally snuffed at the ground. His tail had grown rigid and, and twitched sharply from side to side, a sign of him intense, of his intense mental activity, suddenly halted as though his mind were made up. Comrades, he said quietly, do you, know, do you know who is responsible for this? Do you know who the enemy has come in the night and overthrown our windmill? Snowball! He suddenly roared in a voice of thunder. Snowball has done this thing in sheer male- malignity thinking to set back our plans and avenge himself for his ignominious explosion. This traitor has crept crept here under cover of night and destroyed our work of nearly a year. Comrades, here and now I pronounce death sentence to Snowball. Animal hero second class and a bushel of apples to any animal who brings him to justice. A full bushel of animals who ca- full bushel of to any animal who captures him alive. The animals were shocked beyond measure to learn that even Snowball could be guilty of such an action. There was a cry of indignity, and everyone began thinking out ways of catching Snowball if he could ever come back, if he should ever come back. Almost immediately, footprints of the pig were discovered in the grass as a little distance from the knoll. They could, they could only be traced a few, for a few yards, but appeared to lead to the hole in the hedge. No more delays, comrade, cried Napoleon when the footprints had been examined. There is work to be done. There is, this very morning, we begin rebuilding the windmill, and we will build all through the winter. Rain or shine, we will teach this miserable traitor that he cannot undo our work so easily. Remember, comrades, there, there must be no alteration in our plans. They shall be carried out to the day. Forward, comrades, long live the windmill. Long live Animal Farm. Ah, uh, what is George Orwell talking about? What, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? The, he's you find an enemy, right? The enemy comes in the night, but it's not the enemy that the people think it is. It's some alter enemy. It's it's another enemy that we're not oh we're not aware of. But the pig, Napoleon knows who it is, but he blames his adversary. He blames the the other pig that was exiled, and that the that the people believed in. They find a false enemy, right? Wow. What a lesson, what a lesson. But I thought the pig was elected of the people. The pig rose up to be the leader of Animal Farm, but it turns out 
It turns out that he's, he's, a, he's, a, is he a traitor? He's, he's, he's in cahoots with somebody else. Wow, what a fucking story. Thank you, George Ola. Does it have any pertinence to today? Does it mean anything in today's world? Oh, it was just a little fairy tale from George Orwell. Let's have a look. It's Chris Hedges. The ruling elites who grasped that the reigning ideology of, glo of global corporate capitalism and imperialism expansion no longer has moral or, or intellectual credibility have mounted a campaign to shut down platforms given to their critics. The ruling class who grasped, the re grasped that the reigning ideology is no longer morally is no longer moral or intellectually credible. The attacks within this campaign include blacklisting, censorship, and slandering descendants as foreign agents for Russia and purveyors of fake news. See the parallel. No dominant, no dominant class can, can long retain control when the credibility of the ideas that justify its existence evaporates. It is forced at that point to resort to crude forms of coercion, intimidation, and censorship. The ideological collapse in the United States has transformed those of us who attack the corporate state into a potent threat not because we reach large numbers of people, and certainly not because we spread Russian propaganda, but because the elite no longer have a plausible counter-argument. Right? You see how, the, how the, in Orwell's Animal Farm, the pigs used censorship. They censored out who the real enemy is. And the real enemy was probably the farm next to them or around the corner or it's really, the in our case, it's the corporations. It's the corporate greed that, that sink the country. And then we have to find an enemy over there. Snowball, the traitor. The elites face an unpleasant choice. They could impose harsh controls to protect the status quo or veer leftward towards socialism. No, don't, don't get crazy about the word. I fucking come back to earth to uh, um, ameliorate the mounting economic and political injustice endured by most of the population. But a move leftward, essentially reinstating the expand and expanding the New Deal programs from FDR, they have destroyed, would impede corporate power and corporate profits. So the New Deal works against them, right? They don't, they don't want it. Right? They want to keep it corporate power, even though it's imploding, even though it's failing. So instead, the elites, including the Democratic Party, have decided to, to quash public debate. The tactic they are using is as old as the nation state, smearing critics as traitors who are in service of a hostile foreign power. Tens of thousands of people of, of conscious were blacklisted in this way during the Red Scare of the 1920s and 1950s. The concurrent hyperbolic and relentless focus on Russia, embraced with gusto by liberal media outlets such as the New York Times, MSNBC, has unleashed what some have called virulent new McCarthyism. Right. Let's stay away from McCarthyism, but whoever he is. But you see, I just wanted to point out the startling parallels between the prophecies of Orwell and uh, prophecies of, you know, how history repeats itself and where we are right now. Where you now is it, is it, um, I want to talk about my friend uh, Seething Frog. He did a great video yesterday. You should watch it. Here's the, the, the spot, right? And he, he was, he's, see people, and I don't want to say this like big me, little you, but people, wake up in different at different speeds and at different times and we all have um we all get hooked on certain ideas for me it was it was the belief that sanders could do no wrong in 2016 
even when he betrayed his own people, right? I still wanted to believe and I wanted to give, I wanted to give time to, to see if it, if it was true, if he was in fact a traitor and a sellout. And it, it now, it, it appears truthful. And then that leader rises once again and doesn't, doesn't confess to the wrongs that he did. Therefore, he becomes a false prophet. He's a, he's a fake, right? And here's where here's where Seething Frog realizes something about Trump. And in in that process, we began to take a more critical look at what Trump is doing. So he announced we're pulling out of Syria. Are we pulling out of Syria? <laughs> no. He announced that we're going to release the fee, uh, the the FISA documents, uh, that was last August or so, or July. That was going to be a quick review by the IG uh, for the Justice Department, Mr. Horowitz. Uh, tick, 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 has any of that happened? None of it's happened. We were going to look into the election stuff, none of that's happened. We've got John Bolton that just uh, spooked the crap out of me when he brought him into his inner circle. And of course there were people saying, well, he's got to keep his friends close and his enemies closer. Well, assuming that the people he's drawing closer are his enemies, at least they're ours, and that's what made me think that the enemy of my enemy has to be my friend, right? And so you've got guys like Bolton that were supposedly going to be, uh, who was going to be close but uh, ineffective. Well, he's been rattling sabers ever since. He is a horrible uh, globalist, neocon, he is the darkest of dark ones, and I'm sure that if we dug into his uh, matters like we did Manafort's, uh, we could hang him. We could hang him. Not, not just give him five years in prison like Manafort might be getting. We could hang him. And, uh, and that's true for others. And now there is this Bill Mars, um, uh, Barr, I mean, William Barr, and the guy is a quintessential H.W. Bush neocon, if you think any prosecutions with regard to the Bush-Clinton cabal are going to go across the desk of William Barr, you are smoking something that I'd like to know about <laughs> because it would send me off into euphoria for the rest of my life because it, uh, it, it is totally incomprehensible that William Barr is going to do anybody any good. Uh, the Mueller report, now we are two and a half years into it, nothing has happened. Afghanistan should have been shut down a couple weeks after Trump took office. None of that's happening. Uh, the winnowing away of rights with respect to bump stocks and the limitation of uh, gun chambers and, and uh, what clips and the rest of that, all of that's being peeled down, peeled down. There are whole parts of the country looking at taking over guns. Uh, we've got freedom of speech issues going rampant all over. We've got the Senate, the first thing the Senate did was to push for the uh, re terminating uh, the so-called anti-Semitic uh, uh, boycotting of Israel for the terrible, horrible things it is doing to Palestine. The first thing out of the chute in this na new year. Uh, awful, absolutely awful. It's part of our freedom of speech. It's part of our right to object. It's part of our right to participate. It's part of our capacity in a capitalist uh, country, in a so-called capitalist country, to voice our expressions of displeasure. And, uh, and you've got guys like little twinkle toes Marco Polo, Marco Rubio, uh, that is a boot kicker for Sheldon Adelson, that is right at the forefront, not, not in on it, he's at the forefront of it. And, and not only that, but then President Trump names him to go to Venezuela, right? He's going to be the emissary for that. So we've got an Adelson puppet who is a Rothschild puppet <laughs> that is going to take down Venezuela, which is failing in large part because the, the globalist bankers have boycotted it for 10 years and starved them out. 
uh, refused to buy their goods, refused to, per, to process and sell groceries and everything else to them. Is it, a so, is it socialism? Yes. Was the socialism the cause for the problems there? I don't know. I don't believe it. Uh, the, the socialism was in presence there, but was it the reason that this was taken, to, that Venezuela has failed? And I would say to you, on the face of it, no. No, it wasn't. Um, wow, what an awakening, right? So that was a fervent uh, Trump supporter, a fervent follower of Q, the Q boards, and the awakening, the awakening that like like in 08, uh, right around 2010, 2011, from 08, Obama, where people realized that they had been severely duped and that all of the uh, hopes and dreams in terms of the economy, not the, not the social bullshit, the, the economy to go after the banks was, was fiction, and it, it, never, uh, it never transpired. So here we have a... A Trump, uh, you know, someone in the Trump camp now having that awakening that this president does nothing, has, isn't able to. And that's fine, but at least say it. You know, Trump is not saying it. Trump says, I got, I got this one, hold my beer, you know. And that's, that means he's either complacent in the, he's either complicit in the crime or he's just a buffoon. And, and doesn't see it. I, I think it's the, the former. I think he's very much uh, aware of what's going on. So there's some, some memes that I found. Just, and then uh, I want to play something else. So uh, some just memes. Reform, this is Chris Hedges again, right? This is from who I read before, Chris Hedges. Reform will come and only come through the building of mass movements and alternative centers of power that can overthrow let me re repeat the word for homeland security. Overthrow the corporate state. The corporate state, that is the enemy. It's the, when people say deep state, understand the corporate state. I'm going to explain a little more. If we fail to serve these chains, we will become like the many uh, who did not rise up in time to save their civil society's human cartel. This means... We, too, must defy the law and engage in civil disobedience. I don't know if I agree with the last part of it, but it's a good quote. Here's, this, is, this is really good. This is, this is how half the country, or at least a, a fraction of the country, sees Sanders. They've labeled him a Russian. Right? The, the, good, the good senator from Vermont is a Russian, a, a communist, a communist, communist slash socialist. Uh, he's just a buffoon. He's a he's a tool. He's a he's a decent man, right? Who a decent American, who they've now he's he's Russia because of some fictitious socialism that the that the Russians tried to put on the Americans and the Americans tried to put on the Russians during the Cold War. None of it makes sense. Right? And this is uh, this is a good one, Trump. Where's Obama? He's saying it to himself. Where's Obama? He's in Gitmo. Should Trump be locked up? Mm, I don't know. It continues to be stunning, stunning, dizzying how many people who have spent two years calling Trump a racist, xenophobe, fascist, dictatorial monster are now, now willing to believe he, John Bolton and Elliot Abrams, are just sending humanitarian aid to help liberate the Venezuelan people. Think about, put, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Here's Bernie Sanders. $25,149. That's how much the Walton family of Walmart makes in a single minute. More than the average Walmart worker makes in an entire year. Instead of austerity for working families and the poor, we need austerity for billionaires and massive corporations. See, Bernie says the right things, but and then in the final analysis, he folds like a cheap suit, and he's not. He's he bows to the very powers that are imprisoning people, and says, "Okay, rise up." 
Government won't reform itself. We the people need, need to make it happen. Well, we the people stood up and then he sat down. Right. Joe Biden has run for president three times. 1984, he won less than 1%. In 88, he won less than 1%. In, in 2008, he won 0%. <laughs> You really want this guy to try running for president again? See, it's a shit sandwich, right? They're going to put, the Democratic Party is saying that Joe Biden has a chance to be president. He's never gotten more than 1% of the vote. And, and he likes, he likes his, he likes his uh, young women. U.S.-backed coup attempts in, uh, how many U.S.-backed coups attempted in uh, Latin America between two, 1948 and 2019? Look at the red. Look at how many times we've tried to overthrow governments. Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, pa Peru, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Panama, Nicaragua. Uh, it's just, it's just, it, it's ridiculous to think that we're, we're in Venezuela for, to help the fucking people. And this is our savior. Alessandra. Acacia Cortez, the freshman force. She's going to save everybody. She's going to save the Democrats from the horrible, from the horrible realities of, of, of our existence. So this is that chart I made a long time ago, the Great American Divide. And uh, you can look at it, freeze the frame, and, st and study it if you want. But the, the corporate media, it's, it's right and left, right? It's, it's Democrat, Republican, where close to half the country is, is grounded in the truth. They know what I know, and they know what you know. Right? And there's that truth at the top of the uh, pyramid, T, truth, right? But this, this constant, um, this constant uh, uh, Democrat-Republican uh, argument, as if they're arguing on behalf of us. They're arguing, they're, arguing, they're, they're, they're uh, lobbying for attention, is basically what they're doing. And it's not your attention. It's the corporate attention. It's the, it's the money. Right. And that's what I, that's goes back to another one that I did. It's uh, if you look in the middle of it, it's judicial, executive, legislative branches of power, right? That we, the people all the way at the bottom, the 99% have uh, rely on to get the laws passed that work uh, uh, on our behalf. And at the top, there used to be this thing called the United States Constitution, but it's been replaced by something else, which is global elite, the Fed Reserve, the six large banks, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan City, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America, and the 10,000 publicly traded companies, the 1%. Right? The 1% have replaced the rule of law, the Constitution of the United States of America. Now it's the, the corporate constitution of the United States of America, what the corporations say goes, right? There lies the problem. The, the, corporate, the corporate complex, right? Corporate tyranny is what it's all about. Let's look at one more video, and I'll try to explain it. In the mosh pit. This is the mosh pit, right? What is going on? See the band up in the corner? Stop. While all the fighting's going on, you see the band up here? How many heads are actually looking at the band? Nobody cares. Why? Because this is the show. This is the show. The mosh pit is the show where everybody wants to get involved, right? Everybody wants to get involved in the mosh pit. Look at the players in the mosh pit as corporations. There's one, he tries to get he tries to get in there and someone bangs him out, right? Competition. Ah, oh, get out of my way. I'm I'm in charge. All the competitions, all the competitors. Right? Jockeying for position. Right? And everybody outside is a spectator. That's us. That's the ninety nine that's the one percent in the middle. The band is irrelevant. That's the president. That's the Congress. It's irrelevant. It's background. It's background music. You hear it in the background? Somebody screaming from the podium? 
This is where the action is. See, the corporations, we give them, we, there's only a small mosh pit. Right? And, and, they, and, and this is, this is not, it, the point of it is that it's not, it, it's not the, when people say the deep state, right? You say, oh, the deep state is running the show. They're in charge. But in actuality, this is more of what's going on, where corporations are banging into each other. There, there's a constant brawl, a fight. That's why it's so unpredictable. That's why the, the tides are always changing. That they're not in control. There's no one, there's no, this notion that there's some large family, they're the Jews in Europe, <laughs> right? the, the Rothschilds and the, and the, the Right, the old money who have hundreds of trillions of dollars who own everything, and it's it's really it's really much simpler than that. It's the corporations, the banks, that fight amongst each other and and and, and have usurped the Constitution of the United States of, of America, and they just they keep battling, and there's always a new bully to come along and and punch their way through, you know. My, you know, who's in charge, right? There's a lot of wisdom in the mosh pit. The corporations, we all want to be a millionaire, right? People would rather, rather, you know, thrive to be a millionaire than admit they're starving and they're hungry and they're, they're living in abject poverty. For that one moment in the in one moment of glory, that one moment to get into the mosh pit, right, is worth is worth everything. Is it really? Is that really what we are, as people? This is our society right now. Right? And the white shirts come in, take over. Where's the other guys? They're gone. Stock market. Stock market. Women have no place in the mosh pit. Even saw an apology there. There are rules. If somebody falls down, you pick them up. But not really. You only you set him on his feet again to knock him down again. Fascinating study of, uh, of humans. Look at the humans. Scotty, beam me up. There's no intelligent life on this planet. Or is it? Or is it intelligent life? I don't know. Marcus Conti reporting. Thank you for taking that trip. Oh, we took a trip all the way down somewhere, somewhere deep and funky. George Orwell inspired us. Chris Hedges told us about the revelations of the, of the truth about our existence today. The mosh pit, the revelations of the mosh pit, our human nature. Marcus Conte reporting. 